got my camera zoomed in, so hopefully you can continue to see the colors of the bobbins as they move. Um, and you'll also see what the threads are doing here. You should really be concentrating more on what's happening here at this point. But I know when I first started watching videos, if the bobbins were all the same color across the top, I got confused uh, when someone was showing how to do a, a technique. I got very lost trying to follow the bobbins when there was no clear color um, difference on the tops of the bobbins. So hopefully I can go slow enough um, so that you can tell what I'm doing. But I want to talk about twist and um, what helped me. When I'm learning, I want to know why. Don't just, don't tell me just to do a twist or a cross. Tell me why I'm doing it. And you get different design elements when you add twist. If you can see these holes along here, the thread, the individual threads are twisted right here. It creates a, an opening space. It does not allow the threads to move closer together, so it creates a forced opening. And also, when you add twist along the edge, you can create a foot side or a stronger edge where everything holds together. This was one of my very first practice pieces, so I think the thread I'm using here is a, a number 10 also. So it's not a very neat piece, but I was learning what was happening when you do a twist or a cross. So uh, let me weave over a few stitches here and um, then I can do a twist. Uh, let's do a, a vertical twist first and the vertical will be the um, passive pairs that are running down the warp here. We'll create twist in there to get different sizes. I don't have some of my original samples that I, I first learned on but when you do a spider like this, these spider legs are nothing but a bunch of twists to create the leg of what they call the spider. And here's some more spiders here, and there's twist in there that creates all of these openings. So let me move out the bobbins that I don't need without them crossing over each other. All right, I've got my first two pairs, and I'm just gonna weave over a little bit so it's cross twist, cross, and then tension, cross, twist, cross, tension. Now I'm going to check the twist on the next pair. There is no twist in my yarn. So if I want to create a vertical space, I can twist once or twice. Let's twist twice to see what that looks like. So I'm twisting the left-hand pair, not my worker pair. I'm twisting the passive pair. So again, right over left, twist, twist. Now that's twist one. Uh, when I say T2 or twist two, that means twist two pairs. But in this case, I'm only twisting one pair over itself. One, two. All right, now I can do a whole stitch. Cross twist, cross. And you see, it's not letting me go any farther than the twist. The twist prevents me from tightening up on that, and that's where you get a, a hole created wherever that twist is. So now I can move that bobbin out of the way, and then let's choose, do the next one normal. Cross, twist, cross, and then tension. Cross, twist, cross, all the way across. And my thread's getting shorter, so I'm going to lengthen that a little bit. And I need a little bit more. So I'm all the way to the other end, so now I need to put in a pin in the next pin hole. And then when I tension all this out and straighten out my bobbin, you can clearly see that twist is causing an opening to spread out there. So if you do um, several in a column straight down, then you get a nice little design going that way 
Um, actually, these are, are a horizontal twist, but um, if you do vertical twist, you get the, the, uh, the openings going in a different way. So uh, let me show uh, a horizontal twist. Cross, twist, cross, tension. Now, if I cross my worker pair or I twist my worker pair, then I'm going to get that horizontal twist. So remember, the twist is right over left, so you're going to go however many twists you want. Twist, twist, let's do three, twist. Now I can do my whole stitch. Cross, twist, cross. And you see it's creating a hole going this way. So when you're creating your own designs, you can keep the twist in mind when you're deciding to uh, leave a, an opening or bridging from one point to the next. And I'm running out of thread again. And all the way to the other side. So when you start adding twist in there, whether it's accidental, or not that was the one we did on purpose it it won't when you do the next row you'll see that hole clearly just as you can see this one now that I've woven a couple of more rows you can see that one's starting to spread apart so let's go ahead and put in a pin between those two pairs and the next pin hole and weave across. I'm going to weave just normal back and forth. We've made it back to the other side, so I'm going to go ahead and put in a pin and lengthen my thread a little bit. I'm getting low on my worker pair, so um, I didn't go but the one, the one time back. And I just wanted to show how you can see that that twist is spreading that opening out there. When you look at a pattern like this one, see if it this dark color, let me use the white one so it'll show better. You can see that the twists are put in to create these uh, openings here. And like I said, the spider. Um, Let's see which other one. These are these are another design that use twist in a different way to create. You do a few rows of normal cloth stitch, and then you would do a row of twist vertical, and then um, you can space it out the way you want to um, to get the design that you're looking for. You can draw it up on graph paper. But I wanted to show while I have a little bit of thread left on this worker pair. I wanted to show how to do a, uh, they call it a, sometimes they'll say cloth and twist, or they'll say whole stitch twist, which means you add an extra twist at the, um, at the end, or at the end of that stitch. After the whole stitch, you would add an extra twist. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, a cloth and twist or a whole stitch twist, they're both the same, is equal to a cross, twist two pairs, cross, twist two pairs. So, move these out of the way. Give myself a little bit more thread. So, I'm going to do cross, twist, cross, twist.
cross, twist, cross, twist. Cross, twist, cross, twist. And you can see already the twists that are building up between each pair. Cross, twist, cross, twist. And this is the same stitch that we're going to use for the torsion ground stitch. Cross, twist, cross, twist. Except for, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but on the torsion ground you'll be adding a pin between those half stitches. But once you learn these few hand motions like this, you can pretty much follow any pattern as long as you study the pattern first and um, the pattern designer tells you in what order to uh, stitch each section, then these are all different manipulations of the same, the same stitch is the same as knitting or crochet where you just learn a handful of stitches and then you can manipulate them any way you want to create a pattern. So cross, twist, cross, twist. See how far I can go with this thread. And my pairs are staying together in their colors. Now you can see it's getting a little hard to tension because of all those twists. So it's time to put a pin. Let's see if I have enough thread to make it back to the other side. Cross, twist, cross, twist. This is still my worker pair. Cross, twist, cross, twist. I'm having to, uh, I have to manipulate it a little bit more than I did before because it's, the twist is making it a little hard to tension. And you'll see people online that are holding these bobbins in their hands. It's really difficult for me to do that. But all they're doing is they're crossing over like this, and then they're flipping them, crossing over and flipping. I find that very painful, so I don't like to do that. And another thing I want you to notice is there's already a twist here from the previous row. Because we were uh, doing the cloth and twist, we're ending with a twist, so every one of these stitches from the previous row has a twist in it. So when I mentioned in uh, earlier to always check your twist when you're getting ready with the next pair of bobbins, when I say check your twist, decide whether you want that twist or not. If you don't want it, then just go ahead and un untwist it. Usually when you're studying the next row that you're fixing to do, you prepare all your bobbins first. You either put the twist in or you take the twist out depending on what stitch pattern you're doing. But in this case, I'm continuing the um, the cloth and twist, so I'm making sure all my bobbins still have a twist in them, and this one did too, so that's one twist. You can see it right there, so cross, twist, cross, twist. So that's why I started getting in the habit of saying, check my twist, cross, twist, cross, twist, tension. Then it becomes automatic. Check my twist, cross, twist, cross, twist. Cross, twist, cross, twist. And then later you can add an extra twist to the side to make more strength when it's going around the pin. But um, I'm not gonna do that now. I, I started to do it because I was in the habit of doing a foot side and it's a different stitch sequence, but it's still only cross, crosses and twist. That's all it is into uh, doing these techniques. If you know how to do a cross or a twist, then you're good to go. So this is the design you get when you do the whole stitch 
and twist or the cloth and twist.